Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days, and um, sometimes I get comments like, why do we need QA if developers can test? What is QA all about? Uh, so today is just a comment uh, exactly like that, and I would like to reply to that comment, um, and I like to reply to those sort of comments with some analogies and examples, real like kind of realistic examples. So here's, here's a couple of comments that the uh, user left. QA stands for quality assurance. If they're just going to say it is everyone's responsibility, why on earth do they exist as a role? That's one. And the second one from the same user, I sometimes wonder why QA exists. They consistently miss every bug and I read lots of articles saying that QA should not be uh, to blame for bugs being missed. My question then is why the hell do QA exist and what is their purpose? All right, so imagine you work uh, in a food place, whatever, restaurant or fast food place, uh, and you should probably would agree that uh, washing hands is everyone's responsibility, like testing or quality of the product is everyone's responsibility. So if you work with food, you go use restroom or you did something, you know, where you touch not food, something that might be contaminated, you have to wash your hands, right? Uh, so everyone washes their hands, developers, everyone's testing, developers, project managers, everyone's responsible for health, safety, everyone's washing hands. But there's also a person that not only washes the hands when they work, they may be like a, a person that is like maintenance or something. So they, they also have that sign saying everyone must wash their hands in the bathroom. They also restock and buy the soap, make sure that everyone is washing their hands. They also make sure that the proper technique is followed that you have to like soap your hands for 30 seconds uh, really well and then uh, on each side of your hand and then use water to flush it all, all off. They also make sure that, you know, they're paper towels and they restocked and, you know, that you order them in time. So there's a lot of responsibilities aside from uh, making sure that quality is everyone's responsibility. There's around, around that there a lot of responsibilities for the process to actually keep on happening, streamlined, and that everyone keeps testing as part of their development effort. Uh, but also that testing is happening, it's consistent, and that's why it's everyone's responsibility. So washing hands is everyone's responsibility. Testing is everyone's responsibility. Everyone's responsible for the outcome, for the quality of the product. Now the processes, uh, make sure that it's going well, make sure that there's soap, make sure that there are, you know, test cases, scenarios, and plan for testing and strategy and tools and so on and so on. So that's all QA, right? Aside from just testing, there's all other activities happening. Now, let's imagine we have two products, right? Now, from like hypothetical or uh, kind of a, what do you call it? Analogy, right? From analogy to a hypothetical example. So let's say we have two products. Uh, they are from competing companies. That, let's say they both do AI. They're about to release their AI. Um, and they're both big companies. So they're at the same day gonna release their AI and you know they're fighting for the competition, fighting for the market, whoever gonna get more customers. So the thing is company A uh, did not use QA and they just had developers test. Company B did actually have QA in place. And when there's a release, the product, which product are you going to use that has less bugs, that is more stable, that is more streamlined, that is uh, easier to use, better to use, you know, easier to figure out, or the product that continuously crashes, hangs on, doesn't support your device, doesn't work on certain browsers, and so on and so on and so on. So without having QA, normally you will have, okay, let's say developers test and PMs test, and uh, that's it. So developers will test the happy pass, uh, which means they'll go through the scenarios that are, you know, the most likely to be used by the user. They might even create unit tests. Uh, and let's say they're backend and frontend. So backend tested their stuff, frontend tested their stuff, and they say, we're done. Everything's done. They never had any uh, in-between environment. They didn't have any test environment or sandbox environment because who's responsible for that? Who's going to manage that? So from development, they went straight to production. Um, the integration part wasn't actually tested between the front end and the back end. They sort of worked it with mocks 
well, mocks do have the response happening, and we, we know when we launch everything together, it should work. Uh, and the API documentation were never updated since a lot of changes since a lot of, since the start of the product. The API docs never were updated. Uh, front end was relying on the docs creating their uh, their stuff. Uh, back end didn't update it. They they worked through the tickets, um, and then when you start doing when you start putting th things together back and say, I tested my stuff, everything worked. Front end said, well, I tested my stuff, everything works. You start bringing things together and nothing works. There was no integration whatsoever. There was no environment in between that would test that. Uh, there was no QA process. It just tested the happy pass. Like, okay, this works on my end, this works on my end. And as a result, no users from product A can create any accounts they can't on on the day of the release of the product no users can create an account and log in and use their product because because of some outdated documentation that was uh, used by front end they didn't implement it correctly there's some required fields that are missing during the the request that goes to the back end back end never uh, fulfills the request because the required field is missing and that's it no users from company a on the release date can use the product for the AI. Company B, however, did have QA in place, did have QA processes in place, did have a test environment, a sandbox environment, uh, did do proper testing, not only happy pass, but negative scenarios. And they did uh, boundary testing and they did integration testing uh, and they had a process in place. Maybe they could roll back if something's broken, uh, you know, just completely different story. So their product works. Users can create accounts and then we can use the product. So who do you think is going to be a winner long-term from that situation? Bad launch, maybe company B, uh, you know, is not even not as shiny as company A. But because company A could not launch anything, everyone went to company B to check out the product. Uh, just from that start, you're probably going to you lose most of the market for a very long time. I, I don't know. Compare uh, Google Maps, Apple Maps. How many of you was iPhones? use Apple Maps. How many of you with iPhones use Google Maps? Ask ask yourself why. Why is that happening? Why did that happen to you? Right? Um, so QA, so QA doesn't mean that there will be no bugs, right? The thing is with bugs, doesn't matter how much you test, there will be bugs you will have bugs because environments are endless amount of them. Things can change. There's endless, endless amount of scenarios and so on and so on. The bugs will happen. When you have a QA uh, team, it will find most of them, especially critical user scenarios, end-to-end -end scenarios, user flow that is very important for the product to function properly. They will find and identify those and those will get fixed before the production, right? They will also have a regression set up in place that runs through this most critical scenarios, make, making sure that everything stays in the working condition and no release, no new build breaks your product completely and stops it. You will have bugs still. That's normal. Like it's impossible to catch all of the bugs. They will happen. Normally, there is a KPI or a metric in place, uh, some percentage of the bugs allowed that can be found uh, and it, it is tracked and traced what was found by the customer report to the customer support. F to simplify things, let's say four bugs, right? One mid-level, three low-level, and maybe occasionally one critical. But normally four bugs is the, you know, the standard amount that we're going to expect to be found by the customers from release to release, right? Um that means no critical bugs that are breaking the system, no blockers that are breaking the system. Things are still going to work from release to, to release. But there will be four bugs that customer find report and then we will fix them. QA will find, yes, they are in place. We will fix them. They didn't catch those. But that that amount of bugs should stay, ideally should stay consistent. There is a threshold, acceptable threshold of issues that will be found in production by customers. As long as you stay consistent within that threshold, the rest are caught by QA and they're ruled out and they're fixed before the release. As long as you stay consistent, so your level of quality of product stays consistent, you are uh, competing successfully with other products because 
it is on the same level of quality or even better consistently. And QA traces that, that, you know, we're not going from four from release to release to all of a sudden like 10. If we we're at 10, what happened? How we fixed it? How, what do we add? What kind of tests do we add to make sure that we st still say in that threshold, right? So, uh, you know, QA is there to establish the processes and to have, you know, a certain level of confidence in the product's quality um, and that there's not just happy pass scenarios, right? If you have developers testing all the time, they will have, they will, have, first of all, they will cut corners. They will most likely going to test happy pass scenarios. So only th how they think they, they things should work. And that will also take their time from development. So in the end, you will have less time for developers to develop and they will spend more time paid more uh, trying to do poor testing or poorly test the product. So it's like a lose-lose situation. Your uh, efficiency of development when goes down. You're just wasting money pretty much. And you get bad testing uh, as a result of, you know, your implementation of like, let's developers test everything. Uh, I know this... There's always this conversation, right? Business always trying to find ways how I can save, how we can save money and cut corners. But there are certain industries, there are certain things that where you just can't, right? Don't don't cut corners if you're building planes or cars. Like don't, let's not test the brake system, right? Let's not test the injection system. Let's not, you know, let's not test the oxygen meter, whatever. So it just, it's just, it's not like that, right? You have to have dedicated people that sign off and say, we actually test everything looks as it should be. And if something's wrong, they just report it, make it visible and make sure it is fixed. And, you know, you, you, you can't, you, you have to have someone holding development and business accountable for the quality of the product. It's like a kind of old way of doing things, but the newer way is just, you know, promoting quality, everyone's responsibilities, as a queue engineer across the teams and team members and make sure that everyone understand why it's important. Okay. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, let me know in the comments. This is Alex. You say days. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.